What up, brothers? Coming back at you with the rest of this Cobalt Teardown. Now it's time to get into the bigger things as far as pulling the supercharger, intake, alternator AC, all the good big stuff. And just showing a little bit of that, depending on how far we get, how much time this takes, and what I can fit in this video, we may start pulling some of the engine apart as well. One thing I also wanna let you guys know is if you haven't noticed, I'm posting videos every Wednesday and Sunday. So if you guys are really interested in what we're putting out, just uh, keep an eye on Wednesday and, Thursday, Wednesday and Sunday nights is when we do our posting. You know guys, surprisingly, I was expecting way more oil in this intake just because of the amount of blow-by, but the catch cam was doing a pretty damn good job because that intake's pretty clean. If you guys watch the pulley swap and dual pass video, you see how nasty this intake is. There is so much oil in it. And that was before I put the catch can on it, so that's kind of a good comparison to see the before and after of what it actually does for the intake. Alrighty guys, I got all the dress up off this thing, all the extras. She's looking pretty slim, but she's still pretty fat because she ain't no Honda motor. Uh, so the way I organize everything, got some of the bolts I still have yet to organize. I put all the bolts in bags and label them so I know exactly what they're for, where they go. And then on this bench over here, I gotta just have everything just laying down here. It's nothing in order or whatnot. It's pretty obvious what it is. Uh, the one thing to know with this water pump, you can't get the whole water pump out because it's still attached by a chain inside here. And I'll show you that once we pull this front cover and whatnot to see everything. But now it's time for the fun stuff. All right, get in there. Not nearly as good as the RSX. Oh my. This thing looks like trash, dude. It's freaking black in there. Even with the light on it. Eh. Not totally trashy, but it's pretty damn ugly. Oh yeah. It smells like carbon too. Yeah, look at that thing, it's nasty. Wow, dude. Yeah. And I cleaned this out when I did the, the uh, catch can. I couldn't even think completely out. Yeah, it looked pretty damn good before I put it back together. And that was... Strike a finger across there. No, I'm, I'm scared to. I don't Let's know if <laughs> That's sexy really clean. It's so caked on there. It doesn't want to come off of my finger. But yeah, you figure I did the catch cam maybe 2,000 or a little more miles ago. Sloppy chain. Ooh, that is a sloppy chain, Jesus. Uh, and if you guys know about the uh, tensioner for the balance shaft, it's oil pressurized, so don't be alarmed. It doesn't have any pressure until it actually has oil pressure in the engine to create the tension for this belt, or for this chain. But this one, on the other hand, is not. So, so in order to take that time chain off, 
you got this tensioner that's right here. You gotta remove this piece here. And then take off the guides. There's one bolt for this guide here. This is the one that actually gets tension. And then this one has the bolt down here for the guide. And then behind this plug here, there's another guide bolt there that'll take them both off. And obviously the one on top for this guide is pretty simple. Just two bolts in the top. And the chain will come off. Although you gotta take these uh, sprockets off as well. You VVT guys have uh, a little bit more meat up here. But yeah, to get the chain off, you gotta take these sprockets off as well. So, in order to get these sprockets off, you got these hex heads here that you can use with an adjustable. I think, I believe it's a 7 eighths, don't quote me on that, if you were gonna actually use a wrench, but it works fine like this. Because obviously, if you're trying to rip on this thing without it, you're gonna move the cam through and all that good stuff. And uh, so, the guide falling out the bottom there. If you'd... <laughs> yeah, so. Get the right size there. Rip it and rip it. Go! <laughs> oh, damn! All right, maybe not, fellas. I'm gonna try the other one. Hot pan. <laughs> Ooh, I get a snap, but that's it. I need some real leverage, boys. This shit's too short. I didn't know it was gonna be that tight. Bro. That was much easier, honestly. So, well, I just added out everything we just yeah, did. Yeah, just don't, don't even pay attention to what was just happening. Good. All right, so one thing I was not aware of is these sprockets are actually identical, whether it's intake or exhaust. So with the intake, it has a timing mark. And on the same gear with the exhaust, it also has a timing mark. And it just depends on whether you put it on the intake or exhaust. The way that these work though, is if you see the keys on here, if you pay attention, they're actually a little higher. They're not actually center in the circle. So you can't put them on wrong, even though it has two markings. And if you look at this on the actual cam itself, it's the same thing where they're off center. They're not actually dead center. So if you try to put it on backwards, it's actually not gonna fit on. So there's only one way you can actually put these on correctly. You can make standard. I'll we'll just go alone from downtown. People, dude, brothers. Yeah. So you got these little guys on the front of the case, on the front of the head. Two on the sides here too. If you see the one down in there, and same thing on the other side here. Hiding. Just make sure you get them, otherwise you'll be trying to yank that head off and nothing will happen. Oh, this bolt uh, used to be a 15 millimeter. Uh, we had to turn it into a 9 16 because of the impact couldn't take it off and it rounded off. Yeah, uh, but side note, take them off staggered from outside in because that's the way that it's torqued down and doing it reverse keeps the motor or the head from getting all wonky when you pull it off. So, yeah. We are about to pull it off and look at these pistons. All right, here it goes. Yep, there it is. Oh, yeah. Look, they've been dented. <laughs> <laughs> so much boost, the pistons got dented. Dude, you see that? All that boost to get a reverse nipple. It's an idiot. Got them innies. Won't be breastfeeding anytime soon. But one thing I did have a thought of is that maybe I uh, blew a head gasket. We're about to see if that's a possibility or not. It might have blown the head gasket here because if you see how it kind of has that, it has really nice solid white around, but then right there, it's kind of scuffed up there. And you got the same thing on number one over here. See how it has all this nice solid white over here where it was sealed and it kind of it's good. questionable around here <laughs> yeah, and see if you look at the head here remember what I was talking about on the, the head gasket or on the block 
You can see how it, there's no black, you see how it's like really distinct where it's sealed. And it's right here, it's moved out. Same thing with the top up here, right on the, this part here. Number two here was the worst one as far as leak, but I don't know how you, what you can see. But I mean, you can still see the cross hatch on that thing. Oh yeah. It's just got some lines from the rings, but other than that, everything's looks great. This thing, uh, if you guys didn't know, it has like 120,000 miles on the motor now. Um, so really, I think the only problem we had was a little too much boost for these rings. They might have just been folding up and having too much blow by because of that. I mean, because I had the catch can and had a vacuum on it to kind of relieve that, but obviously that didn't work. And I think the rings are just had enough. So, <laughs> which is cool because now we don't have anything that's broken or failed that we have to replace, but obviously I'm gonna replace as much as I can for as cheap as I can because I wanna go and at least make 300 wheel, uh, just depending on how much stuff costs. I'd like to go bigger than that, obviously, but you know, it just all depends on what I can get. So, this is uh, gonna conclude the video for this for now. Um, we're gonna pull the bottom end off on another video. But like I said in the beginning, I post videos on Wednesdays and Sunday nights, so pay attention to that, just keep up with that, and you know, we'll let you know as we go. Take it easy, brothers.